Hi, this is Clinton, inviting you to listen to my show, Comedy Forecast, during Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. This episode of Bells in the Battery originally released January 30th, 2020. All right, Artie, let me see if I understand exactly why we are flying in this clunky old airplane. Clunky? Look, Mr. Bell, this aircraft has been certified by the FAA. Look at the certificate and tell me what FAA stands for. Okay, um, ah, Flimsy Aircraft Agency. So this plane is certified certified flimsy. flimsy. Mm -hmm. And we are flying in it because... In our last exciting episode, Brad was in the deep, dark jungles of Nova Scotia seeking the magenta moose that he was hired by Mr. Buckman to find for $10,000. And he needed our help. Very good, Arnie. Here, take off your cap. Okay. Now put this one on. All right. Why'd I do that? To thank you for your excellent... Recap. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bell. All right, Governor, we're getting close to our destination. Governor, you got all get ready. Ooh, we're getting close, Mr. Bell. Pick up your parachute, Governor. What? We'll get you all strapped in and ready to go. Wait, are you saying I have to jump out of this plane now? Uh, I wasn't talking to you, sir. I was talking to the Governor. Right, Governor? Yes, yes, I, I suppose I'm ready to go. Uh, <clears throat> get this thing on, yeah? Uh, Governor? Yes, yes, Why are you jumping out of an airplane over the jungle? Well, this was a gift given to me by my constituents. Uh, <clears throat> they insisted on me to taking a vacation. I didn't really expect to be jumping out of an airplane in a deep, dark jungle, and uh, I think I'm starting to understand uh, how my constituents really feel about me. Let me tighten this strap a little bit for you, Governor. Oh, that's a little tight around the executive branch there. All right, Governor. According to the map, we're right at your jump point. Get ready. And where exactly did they tell you to drop me? They said to let you jump right smack dab in the middle. Oh, well, that should be interesting. Of nowhere. Wait just a minute. They also said you might need a little bit of a push. Wow, wow. For me. Whew, sure, I'm glad that we're not jumping out of this airplane. Yeah, Mr. Bell, yeah. <laughs> How about that? What? Tom, just strap on your parachute. Well, wait a minute. No, no I'm not it's, jumping. It's, no. no. It's, it's okay, Mr. Bell. It's perfectly safe. We just take our parachutes and jump. Parachute. How's that? You got the economy class trip. That means only one parachute. How can we both jump with just one parachute? Sharing is caring, sir. All right, who's going to wear it? Oh, I guess I will. Arnie? It's okay, Mr. Bell. I don't mind making the sacrifice. No, no, that's not what I mean. Let's get these straps really tight here. Oh, my test tubes. Arnie, I should wear the parachute. You wouldn't be saying that if he strapped it to you, Mr. Bell. Oh, step up to the door. I am not liking this. No, this is very important. You have to jump out together when I say jump. Geronimo! Oh, dear. He ate the chips before they were properly fried, eh? Uh, what do I do now? I'd say you need to catch up with him, sir. Catch up? It's got a bit of a head start on you, sir. You might want to jump out pretty soon, sir. Like when? I'd say before he hits the ground, sir. I see your point. You want me to give you a push, sir? No. So do it quick. right oh. Well, that's it for the passengers. I suppose I should go back to the cockpit and fry this thing now. Catch up with you. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry about that. Uh, how can we get together? We should be able to control the direction of our fall by adjusting our bodies. It's worth a shot. Let's try to head toward each other. All right, here I come. Me too. Oh, we pass each other, Arnie. We got to aim better. Let's try it again. All right, I'm coming right towards you. Thank I'm you. coming right towards you. you. I'm coming right. Thank you. Oh. Hi, Miss Bell. Pull the ribcord, Arnie. Pull the ribcord. I can't, Miss Bell. You're on my back and you're on top of the parachute. And I pull the ribcord and won't open. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, let me see if I can scunch around to your front. So we'll be face oh, to I face. Well, I don't think it could get more awkward than this. Hold me tight, Arnie. And I fall corrected. Pull the ripcord. Pull the ripcord. All right, all right. Ah, there. That was my belt, Arnie. All right, all right. Keep your pants on. Let me find the ripcord. Hurry up, Arnie. The earth is getting awful big down there. I think I found it, Mr. Bell. Let me see if I can pull it. Ah. 
Arnie, you don't seem to be pulling, Major Bell. You're not pulling hard enough, Arnie. It needs a big jerk. Well, Bragg's not here. Let me just try pulling it harder. You did it, Arnie. And just in the nick of... Oh, oh, oh. 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 Time. Wow, what a ride. Can we do it again, Mr. Bell, huh? Can we, huh? No. Spoil sport. Well, here we are in the dark, deep, dense, deserted jungles of Nova Scotia. Nice alliteration, Mr. Bell. It's my perfect pleasure to please. Now, how are we going to find Brad? According to the GPS coordinates he sent, he should be 35 feet over that way. Come on, Arnie. GPS is accurate, but it's not that... Here I am, guys. Only 36 feet away from you. See? Told you. Inaccurate. Mr. Bell! Brad! Arnie! Mr. Bell! Brad! Arnie! We came as soon as we got your message. Well, after lunch. Oh, yeah, and a quick nap. And binging a little Netflix. But here we are. What can we do to help? There's an ancient legend that says the magenta moose is hidden in the Cave of Wonders. Ooh, Ooh the, the Cave, Cave of, of Wonders. Wonders. Yeah, I just said that. You don't have to repeat everything I say. It's not like Arnie, where you have to tell everybody exactly what he's saying because you can't understand what he's... Hey, me a so I like a all right, all right, all right. So you need help finding this Cave of Wonders on the map. Oh, no, no, I found it on the map. Oh, then you need help following the map to find the Cave of Wonders. No, no, I found the Cave of Wonders. It's right over there, about 37 feet in that direction. So what did you need us for? Well, I, uh, I... I got lonely. You mean we came all this way and jumped out of an airplane just because... Brad, you're an idiot. Did you understand that? Okay, okay, calm down. I also have a problem getting into the Cave of Wonders. And what's that problem? Follow me to the cave, I'll show you. It's uh, 37 feet in... Yes, I know where it is. This better be a big problem. It's right through here. There it is, the opening. Well, it seems to be wide open. Why don't you just go in? I tried, but every time I get close, something odd happens. You have a thought? No, 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 it's something really creepy and weird and possibly dangerous. Walk over there and see what happens. Oh, yeah, you expect one... One of us to... Okay. Only one may enter here. The diamond in the rough. Okay, got to admit, that was pretty impressive. So to get in, i got to figure out this whole diamond in the rough thing. If I remember my movies correctly, I think what it's saying... I mean, I did what I could. I built a baseball field in the tall grass on a golf course. Huh? A diamond in the rough. What's wrong with you people? Can't you figure these things out? I take it that didn't work. Yeah, and boy, is a local golf club mad at me. I thought this area was uninhabited. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean they're not civilized. I think what it means is someone who has potential to become great. Oh. 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 Potential. Well. Mm-hmm. We're out of luck. luck. Wait a minute. What does that sign over there say? Oh, I didn't notice that before. Let's go look at it. Uh, it's written in an ancient Nova Scotian jungle dialect. Fear not! I can translate it using my ancient Nova Scotia jungle to English translator, you later. How about we use Google Translator? That was what I was talking about. Okay, let me input this, and here we are. Main entrance to Cave of Wonders closed. Please disregard automatic answering device. Please use door on right. There's a side door? It's over there! Is it the Cave of Wonders? Let me try it out. Oh, here, it's unlocked. We have terrible security here. Come on, guys. Let's go inside. Will you look at this? Stone shelves on the walls displaying colorful animal statuettes. Oh, I think I'm going to be rich. Uh, look, Mr. Bell, there's, there's a whole bunch of the same things over and over again. I see what you mean, Arnie. There's a dozen identical purple penguins on this shelf. And look at all these identical teal turtles. And there's not just one puce goose here, but a bunch of them. I don't think we're in the Cave of Wonders. I think we're in the Cave of Wonders gift shop. Everything in here has been mass-produced. I don't think I'm going to be rich. Hey, guys, look at that shelf up there. It has just one solitary, unique artifact. It looks like a magenta moose. <laughs> I think I'm going to be rich again. Uh, here, someone give me a boost. I might be able to reach it. I'll give you a boost, Mr. Bell. Yeah, well, uh, maybe somebody a little taller... And a little stronger. No offense, Arnie. It's okay. Plenty taken. Move over. I'll take care of this. You gonna lift me up, Brad? No, no, no. I found a ladder. Here, let's lean up against the wall here. We're talking a little old and rickety, aren't we? Oh, you've got some good years left. Never mind. Here, let me climb up the ladder. There we go. And say, 
There's an old, what looks like a lamp up here. You want that too, Brad? No, lamps rub me the wrong way. It's worthless. Okay, let me reach over and grab the moose and... Got it! What was that sound? Uh, Mr. Bell, have you ever seen Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yes. Remember when Indiana Jones was approaching that golden idol head thing and suddenly all these poison darts just started flying all over the place out of the walls? Yes. Remember how they missed Indiana Jones? They didn't miss me, did they? Oh, Mr. Bell has poison darts in his butt. Brad, this isn't funny. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Bell, this isn't funny. <laughs> so, so, so have I been poisoned? I mean, am I, am I going to croak? Apparently, Mr. Bell, since you haven't keeled over and croaked just yet, I would say that the centuries have kind of reduced the potency of whatever poison might have been on those darts. And I think the points of those darts may have lost a bit of their pointiness over the years. I don't perceive they penetrated perilously past your pants. Oh, well, that's a relief. Still, I wouldn't sit down if I were you until we pull them all out. All right, let me... Come down the ladder here, and uh, could you pull him out, please? Okay, uh, just come over here and be like my friend Benjamin Dover. Benjamin Dover? Ben Dover, Mr. Bell. Gotcha, okay. Hold that pose. Mm. Uh, 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 wait a minute. I thought there were only four of them. Oh, yeah, there were four darts. But there's one nasty-looking spider. Oh, man up, Mr. Bell. Hey, guys, look at this moose. There's something familiar about this moose. I think I've seen this moose somewhere before. Bullwinkle. No, I'm being honest. I mean, it looks like Bullwinkle. I think that's a coincidence. No, it looks like a moose to me. Never mind, let's just go. Yeah, I gotta hand the magenta moose over to Mr. Butman and get my $10,000. Wait a minute, Brad, this is in gift shop. Shouldn't you pay for it? Arnie, I don't think this gift shop has been visited for centuries. I... That's no excuse. Fair is fair. You need to pay for that magenta moose, Brad. Arnie, I don't think... Wait a minute, Mr. Bell. When Arnie's right, he's right. I should pay for this magenta moose. Really? Since I'm getting $10,000 for it, I think I ought to leave a quarter of that here. Brad, that's $2,500. Oh, no, 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 no. I said I'd leave a quarter of the money. Here's the quarter. Okay, let's go. Master Butman, there is a Brad Montworth here to see you, along with two associates. Mr. Montworth, please come in. I'll be with you in a moment, just as soon as I finish with certain pressing negotiations. Now, young lady, where were we? How many boxes of kitty camper cookies do you want? Boxes, my child? Why, none. I deal only in crates. In fact... I'll take all of your current inventory of your most popular cookie. (laughs) Yay! Just sign here. My pleasure. I enjoy doing business with someone who enjoys doing business. (laughs) When will my skinny minty cookies be delivered? Hmm? Aw, we don't sell those anymore. You, You don't? But... The kitty campers have gone health conscious. Please do not use that epithet. In my home. You'll get our current most popular cookie. Kale Crunchies. Get out. Made with the freshest kale. Leave my house. They'll be delivered next week. Be gone. Bye. (laughs) Ah, I trust, Mr. Montworth, that after this debilitating blow to my very existence, that you have some encouraging news for me. Sure do. (laughs) I found it. You found it? The magenta moose? The one and only. Let me see it, dear boy. Hurry, place it upon this table. Here it is. It's a thing of beauty. Look at the exquisite curves in the antlers. Mm-hmm. The fullness of the bulbous snout. How about the gangrenous green of your money, huh? Yes, yes, my lad. You have earned it. Here, take it with my blessings. And remember... That's genuine coin of the realm. Gee, thanks. (laughs) Although I'd prefer folding money instead of all these coins. Mr. Butman, please forgive me, but I've got to know, why is this moose so valuable? It is not valuable, sir. It is priceless. It has supernatural powers. Magical, if you will. What do you do, rubbish antlers? Nothing so crude. I have in my possession a mystical rite 
that must be performed to bring this moose's magic to light. Observe. It starts with headgear. Headgear? The thing in your neck that makes your head turn? Uh, chapeau. Huh? Stetson. Huh? Bonnet. Huh? Sombrero. Huh? Skimmer. Huh? A hat. Well, you could have said so. The rite begins with a hat, which represents the superior intelligence of mankind. You set it brim up thusly. Into this hat, you drop a rock, which represents the permanence of this planet upon which we reside. This is followed by hay. Hay? Hay? Hay, how you doing? The hay, which is used to feed livestock, is representative of man's dominion over the creatures of the earth. Once these three items are united in front of the moose, legend states that a miracle occurs. Shall we try it? (laughs) You need to borrow my inhaler? Quiet, Arnie. Yes, yes, let's see it. I place the hat. So, I drop in a rock. I place some hay. Watch and wait for a miracle. (sighs) I think he needs a miracle of my inhaler. Now that we have hay, rock, and hat, the moose is about to speak. Hey, rock, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Crystal! What's up, Doc? Is that it? Do it again! Do it again! Oh, that was great! Mr. Buckman, you don't look so well. Get out. All (laughs) righty. Enjoy your magic moose. Get out. Maybe you can find a scarlet squirrel to go with it. Out. One that has an inhaler. (sighs) I shall not let this setback dissuade me from my search for paranormal artifacts. I will now devote my attention and fortune to acquiring the legendary Flint Stone of Abba Dabba. Do <laughs> You've been listening to Bells in the Bat Free, episode 239. Copyright to Mr. Bell, I did it, I did it, I did it! Did what? Does this involve, like, police at the door or anything? No, 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 I made good use of the $10,000 I got from Mr. Butman. I called my real estate agent, Hallie Wood. Hallie Wood, huh? Is she good? Oh, she's the best! If anyone could... Hollywood. <laughs> okay, so what is this? I often say, hooray for Hollywood. Okay, okay, okay. What did Halle do for you? She arranged for me to purchase a big chunk of the Nova Scotia jungle. I'm going to build myself a big complex there that people can use for, for gatherings and conventions. Well, that's pretty cool. Is this a done deal? It will be as soon as Halle sends me that fax and... Wait, wait, my machine! Here comes the fax! Here comes the Halle fax! Say, that's a good name for this area. Halifax, Nova Scotia. Oh, dear. And I've already booked an event there. The Modern Audio Drama Convention, otherwise known as MADCON. It takes place the summer of 2020. You can get all the details at (laughs) mad-con.com. Well, now that you've said that, people will be hearing this years from now and wondering what went on back in 2020. Oh, that's pretty funny, Mr. Bell. (laughs) You mean their confusion? No, the idea that years from now people will be listening to the show. (sighs) Copyright 2020, way back when... By John Bell Creative, LLC. Thank you for listening. If you produce audio dramas, it obviously isn't to become rich and famous. You love the medium, and you want to share your passion for theater of the mind. The Mutual Audio Drama Network is looking for you. Mutual presents audio dramas every day of the week, each with its own genre. Mystery, sci-fi, comedy, horror, all reaches of the imagination. It doesn't matter if you produced your shows years ago or are still cranking them out. Share them on the world's largest collection of modern audio drama and audio fiction. Give a listen at MutualAudioNetwork.com. And if you'd like to be a part of the excitement, with free access to all sorts of voices, sound effects, music, and more, just drop a line to mutualaudio at gmail.com. The Mutual Audio Drama Network. Why not join us today?